Welcome to the second session of the BioXL Bivnim Blocks lecture of this BioXL Summer School. Um, we are here in the second session, Computational Biomolecular Simulation Workflows using the BioXL Building Blocks. Uh, it's going to be 30 minutes with that. And after that, remember that we have a query and answer session. So please take notes and be prepared to uh, answer, uh, comment or suggest everything that you uh, wish to know uh, from the BioXL building blocks. After that, we'll have a virtual break, uh, 25 minutes. And then we have the final session today, which is the hands-on session where we are going to work uh, on all together on a Jupyter notebook, uh, trying to set up a molecular dynamic simulation of, of a protein ligand complex using the BioXL building blocks. From the previous presentation, you already know what are the BioXL building blocks, uh, what is the philosophy behind the software uh, library. You know that uh, if I have convinced you that you can easily build uh, workflows, uh, biomolecular simulation workflows using these uh, building blocks. And you also know that uh, you can uh, control these workflows. You can orchestrate them using uh, different workflow managers, graphical user interfaces, uh, such as uh, Nymore Galaxy, uh, and also Jupyter, which is the one that we are going to use uh, today in the hands-on session, and uh, also HPC-based um, uh, workflow managers such as PyCons or Toil. <clears throat> the tutorials that we have in the website are uh, these four that I uh, already presented in the previous uh, presentation. <coughs> They are all uh, built in Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, we like a lot Jupyter Notebooks, and I will tell you now in a moment why we chose uh, Jupyter Notebooks for our demonstration workflows. We chose Jupyter Notebooks in general because uh, we think it is a fantastic tool for training events, like the one that we are going to have uh, uh, in this afternoon session. Uh, we think that it's uh, uh, really uh, nice to be able to inspect intermediate results, like the one that you have here, which is a three-dimensional structure uh, seen uh, using the NGL uh, viewer. Um, it's really nice to be able to interactively modify the parameters for all the, your uh, different steps in the workflow. So imagine you uh, want to change um, the type or the size or the size of the box in your simulation or the number of steps in your uh, final simulation, for example, it is really easy to modify the parameters and uh, run it. You know that you can run cell by cell uh, the different steps of the workflow. I know that because you uh, already used Jupyter Notebooks for the uh, morning session uh, in Gromax, so you are already familiar with Jupyter Notebooks. And they also have the possibility to run uh, the whole workflow in my binder. We are for the ones that are not familiar with my binder. We will see an example uh, in this presentation, and I will tell you about this. But it's not just uh, all of these uh, general uh, keys and functionalities of the Jupyter notebooks. Uh, there is also particular things that are really interesting for us for the BioXL building blocks. One of them is to be familiar with the BioXL uh, building block syntax. So with, with the Jupyter notebook, it's really easy to understand the syntax and you will see that uh, in a moment. It's also uh, uh, easy to understand how to build workflows using these uh, Jupyter notebooks. And you will see also that using the tutorials that we have already uh, prepared for you. And it is also easy to understand uh, how one can package the workflows uh, with the Conda packaging system to export these workflows and make them reproducible and shareable uh, in the community. We'll see examples of all of that. We'll start with the, be familiar with the BioXL building block syntax. Um, here you have an example and it's really easy. This is an, an example of uh, one particular uh, building block, which is uh, called EditConf. As uh, you can imagine, this is our, it is a wrapper uh, of the editconf tool of the Gromax MD package. That is the one that is generating this fantastic box, uh, system box for the uh, MD system. Uh, the way in which you use the building blocks is always the same. You have a first part when, where you import the module that you need. In this case, we are importing editconf from the bio uh, BB MD uh, category, MD module. After that, 
you define inputs, outputs, and properties. In this case, we are defining uh, this uh, output property, which is basically a path, a name of a file that will be our, our output uh, file, our result. And then the properties, which are the parameters of, in this case, the editconf tool that is being wrapped by the uh, building block. In this case, we are selecting uh, that box type, a cubic box, and a distance to molecule of one nanometer. Remember that Gromax is working always in nanometers. Um, these properties here, thanks to this layer that we have, this input parameter adaptation, the, these uh, uh, parameters are adapted to the tool execution uh, uh, parameters, to the local input parameters. That means that this cubic will be transformed, if you remember from the morning session, to a minus C uh, parameter for the edit conf, and the distance to molecule will be transformed to a minus D. But this is internal. You don't need to know that. You just need to know the properties that you can put uh, in the building block. And after that, it's just launching the building block. Inputs, outputs, and properties, it's always the same. The name of the building block and the launch at the end, always the same. So here, the input, usually an input of one step of a workflow takes the output of the previous step of the workflow. And that's exactly what is happening here. So this input is, this output PDB2 uh, Gromax is, as you can imagine, is the output of a previous step where we uh, run a PDB2 GMX uh, tool to prepare the topology of, for the Gromax uh, simulation. We put the output uh, output path, which is this one that we prepared here, and we put the properties, which is this dictionary that we have prepared here. Always the same, and you will see that inputs, outputs, and properties in the rest of the workflow and the rest of this presentation. Examples of that. You have seen an example of an edit conf. Here is an example of how to mutate a residue. This is a particular example. We are mutating an arginine to an alanine that you can see here using modeler tool. So we are uh, wrapping the modeler tool. Uh, here you have uh, the import of the module. Here you have the definition of the inputs, outputs, and properties. Again, only an output uh, and the properties because the input, we are uh, taking the output of the previous uh, step, which uh, is this fixed PDB. We call the mutate with inputs, outputs, and properties. Again, it's exactly the same syntax as before. Here is an example that I, I took from one real example. Actually, that's why you have here the different comments and etc. but this is a real example. But it is the same, importing uh, the module. In this case, we are uh, trying to generate a, a cluster of uh, an ensemble of uh, structures from a trajectory using the Gromax cluster tool. Uh, we define, we import the module, we define the inputs, outputs, and properties here. In this case, we define inputs, trajectory, and topology. We are taking a PDB as a topology. We define the output, ensemble.pdb, just a path to a file. And we define the properties. In this case, we define that uh, we want to fit the selection to just the protein atoms, and we want to output uh, the ensemble of uh, structures, just the protein atoms again. And we uh, launch uh, the cluster building block with inputs, outputs, and properties again. Always the same, as you can imagine. Now, these are uh, different tools, Modeler and Gromax, but less the syntax for the Bioxel building blocks is exactly the same. More examples, a little bit more difficult. In this case, what we are doing is to call different uh, building blocks and joining them together. How are we joining that together? It's really easy. So we are taking the output of the first one and uh, we are using the output of the first one for the inputs of the second one. Let's see the example. We are here uh, importing the modules. In this case, we are importing a couple of modules. Actually, we only need this one, which is the ligand one. We define inputs and outputs and properties and we launch uh, the building block. In this case, the building block is uh, a REST API, is wrapping a REST API that is downloading a ligand structure from one PDB mirror. So in this case, we are downloading the ligand structure which has a code IBP, which is the ibuprofen uh, drug. This is downloading the structure in a PDB format, and uh, we are using, which is this input structure is the name of the file that we are using as an input for the second step of the uh, workflow, which in this case is adding hydrogens using the open bubble, open bubble um, tool. Uh, again, um, importing the module, 
defining inputs, outputs, and properties. Here we are just defining one uh, output. We just uh, leave the uh, properties by default, all the properties by default. We just need to add hydrogens. Uh, we put the inputs and outputs here. We uh, don't care about the properties and we launch the building block. And this is generating the hydrogens to the uh, ligand that we have downloaded in the first step. Here we are just uh, taking a look with NGL uh, viewer at the structure with the hydrogens added. In the third step, we are taking the output of the second step and what we are doing, what we are doing is minimizing the, uh, energetically minimizing the structure with the newly added uh, hydrogen atoms. And again, uh, the same. So we are uh, importing the module, defining inputs, outputs and properties, launching the, the building block. And finally, the last step, of this mini workflow, we are uh, using AC pipe tool to uh, parameterize, to obtain parameters uh, for this particular ligand, the ibuprofen ligand, uh, to be used in a molecular dynamic simulation. In particular, we are uh, interested in the parameters for the Gromax package. Uh, we um, import the module, we define inputs, outputs, and properties, and we launch uh, the building block. This example is a mini workflow, really easy, as you can see, and we are using uh, the building blocks, wrapping REST APIs, wrapping OpenBabel, wrapping ACPy, different tools, but with exactly the same syntax. And basically this uh, workflow is the demonstration workflow that you have here as an example, which is called automatic ligand parameterization. What you have here is uh, more information and you will see that uh, in, a, in a minute, but the workflow is exactly the same, as easy as that. The second point that makes Jupyter Notebook uh, so interesting for us in the, for the bioxyl building blocks is that uh, it allows you to learn how to build uh, our workflows. And this is basically done because we have already generated these tutorials for you and you can take a look at the tutorials. This is an, one, another one of the tutorials, this one here, Protein MD Setup. Uh, you can see that the Jupyter Notebook has a lot of uh, information and documentation about what the, wor the workflow is doing, what is taking as an input, why the modules that we are using, the auxiliary libraries that we are using, etc. So it's a lot of information because of this markdown possibility uh, for the um, Jupyter Notebooks. Here again, information about one particular step. This is a step uh, where, an, where you create the protein system topology using this uh, PDB2GROMAX, PDB2GMX tool. This is the building block wrapping the PDB2GMX tool in, uh, in GROMAX. And look at that, it's uh, import the module, creating or defining inputs, outputs and properties, in this case, no properties, and creating and uh, launching the, the building block. It's exactly the same syntax. And this is uh, generating the topology uh, using this PDB2GMX tool. You can, of course, visualize the, 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 the structures generated using, for example, NGL, uh, and you will see examples of that in the hands-on session uh, this afternoon. But you can also see intermediate results in a, in a way of uh, plots, like this energy minimization. You can see how nicely it's reducing the energy of the system uh, during uh, the energy minimization in Gromax. Uh, here is just Python, pure Python is nothing, this is, has nothing to do with the building blocks, but it's just to illustrate that you can uh, mix the building blocks with pure Python. And this is, uh, this is included in the example in the protein MD setup. Actually, this, uh, for, uh, for the ones that are uh, able to understand that, it's, it's a special prize because this is from one of our developers, Pau Andrio, which likes a lot to uh, mix, map, list and zip from uh, Python in one single instruction. So it's not easy to understand, but this is basically uh, taking the information from uh, the energy, these uh, numbers here, and it's generating this plot using the Plotly uh, library. This is something that you can do with the Jupyter Notebooks, which is really nice. Uh, this particular example is the one that we are going to uh, work this afternoon and is basically um, a, the sum of a protein MD setup and the uh, ligand parameterization. So we are we will parameterize the ligand, we will uh, sum up the ligand and the structure and then we will run the molecular dynamic setup of everything, the protein ligand complex. Finally, 
the Jupyter notebooks uh, allow uh, um, an easy way to understand how to package the workflow and to uh, make it uh, shareable and reproducible. And let's see what I mean by that. So if we want to start with uh, um, a workflow, biomolecular simulation workflow using the bioxygen building blocks, the, the usual thing to do is to create a new conda environment. Uh, that it's uh, just one uh, instruction like this, conda create. Of course, you need to uh, have a conda installed in your uh, system, but we also have tutorials for that. You can go to the website and you have tutorials to install the conda and you will see that uh, in Windows, in Mac and in Linux uh, operating system. It's really easy. Once you have the conda environment, you create a conda environment with this uh, command line here with, with one particular name, the one that you uh, want. You activate the conda environment and you, you will see that the conda environment is activated because it will appear in your prompt and then you install the packages that you need. For example, I'm going to install the Bioconda, sorry, the BioBB chemistry uh, module of all of our packages. You know that we have uh, the Bioxel building blocks divided in different categories. So this is just one, the chemistry, and I'm going to install this. Um, and then after that, uh, I can just type Jupyter Notebook and open the Jupyter Notebook and start working with the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this Conda install will install, remember, all the dependencies needed for the chemistry uh, building blocks to uh, properly run. Here you have all the modules that we have uh, and uh, you, you need to look at the different uh, biocondas that we have here and to understand which one of the packages you need for your workflow and install these packages uh, accordingly. These ones here. You can also go to the bioconda repository and you will find all the BioBB uh, packages in the repository. Uh, how can you export a workflow using these conda packages? really easy. What we are doing is to generating one file, one particular file that is called environment.yaml. And this environment uh, contain all the dependencies needed for a particular workflow. If you remember from the automatic ligand parameterization that I have shown you uh, just a minute ago, we needed the BioBB input output to extract the ligand from the PDB mirror. We needed the chemistry that is wrapping open babel and AC pipe. And we also needed the common because we always need the common uh, uh, for all the modules in the bioxide building blocks. And then we just need NB conda kernels, which is a, an auxiliary uh, package to allow Jupyter notebooks to be able to see the conda uh, environments. NGLB, NGLB to see the molecular uh, structures and the conda by itself. So this environment.yaml is telling Conda that all these dependencies needs to be installed before running uh, the particular workflow. We uh, generate for each of our tutorials this Conda envi this environment uh, file, and we put this file, as you can see here, in the GitHub uh, repository. And that makes uh, the installation and launch of our demonstration uh, workflows as easy as these lines here. So for all of the tutorials that we have, you just need to clone the repository in your machine, enter into the folder which contains uh, the source code, create an environment. How do you create the new environment? Using this environment.yaml file, which is uh, able to uh, install all the dependencies that you need for the particular workflow. So this conda create will install everything that you need. Then you activate the new environment. Uh, you just enable a couple of uh, uh, extensions for the Jupyter Notebooks to be able to see the uh, structures with NGL view, for example, and you execute the Jupyter Notebook with the particular tutorial. That's all the steps that you need to uh, share your workflow uh, built using the BioExcel building blocks. As easy as that. And this environment.yaml is also helping us uh, to use these uh, demonstration workflows, uh, workflows in uh, platforms like uh, the binder, the my binder that I was telling you before. Uh, the binder is able to just with uh, a GitHub repository URL, go to the repository, uh, understand that this environment.yaml is uh, uh, the environment all contains all the dependencies for the particular workflow, is able to read this, is able to uh, install all the conda packages, and then it uh, automatically starts the Jupyter Notebook with all the dependencies already installed. So you can play with the workflow in this MyBinder public uh, interface. 
this public interface, of course, being public, uh, it uh, doesn't have uh, a lot of computational power. Sometimes you get the uh, timeouts because uh, they are offering this for free to everybody. And that's why <clears throat> we are working in BioExcel to integrate a local MyBinder in, uh, installation uh, in our BioExcel Cloud Portal. Uh, our BioExcel Cloud Portal um, will contain all the Jupyter notebooks that will be automatically deployed using this MyBinder in uh, our cloud infrastructure in the YAML uh, EBI premises. This is coming very soon and we will use that to control the number of machines that we'll be able to deploy, the number of workforce that we will be able to work with at the same time, and basically to do uh, type, this type of uh, training event like the one that you are uh, today. So by Excel building blocks, workflows. Uh, how can you start to create the workflows? Uh, I was telling you before, you need to create a quantum environment. It's the easiest way to start using uh, building workflows using the BioXL building blocks. Uh, once you have uh, the quantum environment created, you launch a Jupyter notebook install uh, inside the quantum environment, and then you start connecting the building blocks. You know that there is a unique syntax for all the building blocks. You just need to write them and connect them. I think that there is two different ways that you can start uh, building uh, workflows using the BioXL building block. One is to clone uh, existing tutorials, such as the four that we already have in the website, and then start playing with the tutorials. It's a way to uh, start understanding how uh, you can uh, modify the building blocks and how you can connect them together, or starting a new workflow from scratch. I will start with this one, which is easier. And now you already know how to do that, because all of our tutorials contains a set of lines uh, on how you can install and launch uh, the workflows. Uh, you know these ones, so it's, they are exactly the same uh, in all of the different workflows. The only thing that are changing are the dependencies needed for the particular workflows to uh, properly run. Now, here you can see that we have by more uh, modules. We have a building block analysis. We have the BioBB uh, to model structures. We have the BioBB to uh, run molecular dynamics uh, simulations. So you clone uh, the workflow in your local uh, machine, and you start looking at the documentation that is inside, uh, and start playing. For example, the easiest way to start playing with this is uh, taking the protein MD setup tutorial and modifying the PDB code, which is the input parameter of all the workflow. So the one that is by default is a lysozyme protein. Uh, and it, uh, if you run the entire workflow with this lysozyme protein, it will uh, generate a system uh, completely prepared and equilibrated to start running a molecular dynamic simulation for this lysozyme uh, structure. But if you modify this one, you can go and uh, put something like uh, pyruvate kinase a uh, really complex uh, um, protein and see if this still works with the complex protein, or you can put a DNA, or you can put a protein uh, DNA complex. So it's just uh, modifying this PDB code here, and you can play with the workflow. Of course, you can um, modify uh, directly the building blocks. So in this case, for example, it's really easy. You take the properties of the building blocks and try to modify. You can modify the type of the box uh, for the system, the molecular dynamic system, from QB to uh, wherever, or to rhombic, for, for example. You can modify the distance to the molecule. Uh, you can modify the, the ionic concentration, for example, uh, of the molecule. You can, of course, modify the number of steps of the unrestrained simulation, the last step of the MD setup um, workflow. You can try to take uh, different uh, observables from the from, from the information that is taken, that is uh, uh, produced by the Gromax Energy uh, building block. Here we are extracting the potential, but you can extract the temperature, you can extract the density, it's just modifying the keyword here, and you can uh, see what happens with that. Uh, just a note here, uh, we have um, uh, inside the building blocks, we have some something that uh, are, are a little bit uh, smart. There is, for example, for the MDP, uh, if you remember the molecular uh, dynamics configuration file for Gromax uh, from this uh, morning session, it has many, many, many different um, properties. 
Actually, it has uh, so many properties that we have a dedicated webinar in Bioxel. You can go to the uh, bioxel.eu uh, webpage and try to find it. Uh, talking just one hour about different options for the MDP configuration file in Gromac. So it has so many different options. Um, but there are some of these options that are repeated usually uh, in these processes that are done in each and every uh, molecular dynamic, dynamic setup pipeline, which is the minimization of the energy, the MVT equilibration, MPT equilibration, and the unrestrained free molecular dynamics. So we built um, uh, these uh, pre-configured MDP uh, files for you, and you just need to type in the MDP property that the type of uh, simulation that you want is a minimization, an equilibration, uh, or an unrestrained simulation, and this will be uh, prepared for you automatically. Of course, you can overwrite these properties then, these uh, 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 parameters here. For example, here we are over overwriting this uh, EM tool that was uh, by default to 1000, uh, and we put here 500. This is something that is inside the Grom PP uh, BioXL building block. You cannot building blocks, of course. Instead of modifying, you can start uh, trying to play adding new building blocks. And you can do something a little bit complicated, such as uh, introducing a simulated annealing equilibration step, which is not present in the tutorials that you have in the website. Uh, just putting all the needed uh, keys, commands into the, in the MDP configuration file. Uh, uh, a little bit of caution here because this is only running uh, in Gromax versions 2019.2 or higher because there is a bug uh, on the simulated annealing, but this is an example that you can do. Or you can, uh, for example, introduce a mutation in the protein MD setup uh, workflow and see if you can still run the whole pipeline with a mutated uh, structure and see what happens. It's really easy to uh, add a new building block. If you want to go from scratch, what will you need? You will need to uh, take a look at the table that you have here that is always updated because you, we have this table in the website uh, connected to the GitHub repo uh, using hooks. That means that every time we modify a version of the source code, that this table is automatically uh, updated. Uh, and you need to think about uh, what you want to do. For example, I want to start working with a ligand. I will put here in the search by text that I'm interested in ligands. And I will find something like a, a building block that is downloading a ligand file from a REST API. That's fantastic. I want to start using this. Then I should click on the documentation for this particular uh, building block. Uh, actually, the documentation is for all the module, all the package, the input-output package. When you click at the documentation, you will find the read the docs, typical documentation. You click on the Python API, you will find your building block that you are interested in, the ligand one. You click on the ligand and you will obtain, uh, guess why, inputs, outputs and properties. It's the only thing that you need to know to run uh, the building block. So in this case, you know that there is no input <coughs> needed for this particular building block, but there is an output and there is a properties that you can put, for example, the ligand code, which is interesting. And then you can start writing, importing the module. Actually, we just need the ligand one here. This PDB shouldn't be here. Uh, Defining inputs and outputs. Remember, we don't need uh, inputs, we just need an output. So we define, although it is called input structure, it is an output. It will be used as an output here in the launch. And we define also the properties. In this case, the ligand code. These are the properties, and the ligand code is the ibuprofen. And we put the properties here and we launch uh, the building block. This is how you write one building block, and then it's just a matter of connecting the different building blocks one with the other. Uh, examples of that, uh, different examples. Edit conf, for example, uh, building block. Uh, you click on the read the docs, you will find all the information, inputs, outputs, and properties. Here you have in the properties the distance, distance to molecule and the box type. They are both of them. No, this is a string and this is a float. And here in parentheses, you will have the uh, default parameters for them. So you, we go to the uh, Jupyter notebook, we uh, import the module, we define inputs, outputs, and uh, properties according to the documentation that you have here, and uh, we run the building block. Uh, don't worry, we will 
have time this afternoon to understand all of that and to go one by one with the different steps of the protein ligand complex MD setup simulation. Uh, the same uh, for another example, which is the mutation example uh, in another module. Uh, it's exactly the same. You go to the documentation, input outputs uh, and properties. In this case, you have uh, different inputs, as you can see, and properties, and you do the same here. In this case, what is uh, different from the other ones is that we are using a Docker container. We are not wrapping uh, a particular tool installed in the system, but we are wrapping a Docker container. It's the building blocks has also the possibility. And you will find all the properties here to use a container, Docker container with the building block. Uh, this afternoon in the hands-on session, we are going to uh, prepare a protein ligand complex. Uh, we, will, we are going to split the protein and the ligand from the PDB file, parameterize the ligand, obtain the protein topology in a separated way, and then join together the protein and the ligand topologies and structures, and then run the setup of the whole system. And after that, there is a quality check analysis, RMSD and radius of gyration, that we will uh, use Plotly, for example, to analyze, to, to see the results in a graphical way. And uh, after closing this second uh, session, let me just introduce really briefly what you can do with uh, workflows build by Excel building blocks workflows in a common line way. Uh, as you can imagine, you can export directly the Jupyter notebooks. Uh, here you go to download as um, Python uh, uh, script and you will generate, you will have a Python script with all your workflow and you can of course run this workflow in a common line way. But this has some disadvantages, like um, there's no graphical cells, of course, uh, you are losing interactivity, but you are gaining high throughput, so you can uh, automate it, you can uh, run it many, many different times because this is a common line uh, um, workflow now. The problem of that is that if you want to modify the parameters, if you, if you want, for example, to uh, run this 100 times, you need to modify the parameters for a certain step inside the Python script. And for that, uh, we have another way of doing this, which is the command line interface, uh, Python and YAML, uh, splitting the workflow into <clears throat> the workflow script in the Python and the workflow parameters, remember inputs, outputs, and parameters, and the dependencies between them, between the different steps in the YAML file. If you are interested in that, we are not going into details today here, but you have a command line workflow tutorial that will explain how to do that, how to convert from the Jupyter Notebooks to this common line way of running uh, the BioXL building blocks workflows. And with that, uh, just a summary of everything. So uh, building biomolecular simulation workflows is really easy with this BioXL building blocks library. I hope that I have convinced you about that. If not, we have this afternoon session, uh, the hands-on, where we will try to convince you even more. You just need to create a conda environment, be a little bit familiar with the syntax, the BioXL building block syntax, and start connecting uh, the building blocks together. So Jupyter Notebook Graphical User Interface, as you, uh, as you have seen, is a really good tool to start playing with these building blocks. <clears throat> and you can package all the workflow with the conda packaging and export the workflows in a really easy way too. Uh, and finally, you can export your workflows to a command line way of executing if you are interested in high throughput. And now, Please join us uh, together with, uh, for the query and answer session together with Pau, Andrio, and Janice Bayarri. Uh, and thank you all for participating in this uh, BioXR Summer School.